The Amiga scene in 2022 can be a complicated place. Now, since the demise of Commodore back in the mid-90s, many companies and groups have created or attempt to make their own version of what they think the Amiga should have developed into. And today we've got projects like the Vampire and the Mister, which recreate the Amiga and improve upon it using FPGA. And there are spin-off operating systems like Amiga OS 4 and Morph OS, which run on their own proprietary hardware or old Macs. And then we've got stuff like AROS, the open source Amiga OS clone. We've even got an Amiga mini console coming in a few weeks time. And there's lots of new hardware and operating systems still being made for the original Commodore machines over 25 years later. But by far, the cheapest way to jump into the Amiga scene in 2022 is via emulation. And these days, it's so easy to emulate an Amiga experience far beyond what the original systems had on even the lowliest modern hardware. And using emulators like the brilliant WinUAE and packages like Amiga Forever from Cloanto that have been around for a long time give you that really comprehensive classic Amiga experience. But today, we're going to check out something that can turn an old PC or even a Raspberry Pi into the ultimate modern Amiga retro experience, as they put it. Today, we're going to be looking at Ami Kit 11.5. And if your memory of the Amiga was something like this, then today you might be in for a big surprise. And I'm going to be testing it out using this old Fujitsu PC from around 2009. They also do a version for the Raspberry Pi that we'll have a quick look at at the end of the video, and a version that runs on the Mac, Linux, and even one for the Vampire FPGA board. An Ami kit, which is not to be confused with the Amiga retailer Amiga kit, which I do see that happening quite a lot on forums, is actually a highly upgraded and modified update of the Amiga's operating system that gives you a much more modern experience than you might be used to using an Amiga. And it can take advantage of the power of more modern hardware and allow you to run things like web browsers, video players, and their other Windows or Linux applications on the Amiga Workbench using something called Rabbit Hole that I'll show you in a moment. And AmiKit has been in development for a long time, actually since 2005. And there is a free version you can download, the older AmiKit X from 2017, with free updates through to 2019, which you can choose to download for free from their site or pay what you want if you want to support development, and you should. And they suggest 9.95 euros. But this product is in active development and they offer regular updates, a forum, live chat support, which obviously doing all this stuff costs time and money. So it is advised that you make a donation or if you really want to support them, get the latest version, which has a lot more enhancements and gives you updates for 12 months for a price of €29.95 Euros for a single machine license. So admittedly not cheap, but I think you'll see just how much work has gone into this when we get it booted up. So let's get to installing AmiKit X. Now, I've got Windows 7 installed on this machine. Obviously a bit outdated now, but it will do the job fine for this. Uh, 2.7 gigahertz Pentium G630 CPU in here. Uh, 8 gigabytes of RAM installed too. So this machine is going to give us a pretty decent Amiga emulation experience. And just running the installer, my first impressions are just how slick everything looks already. Nice looking graphics and animation, and we just blast through all this here. And for any emulation of the Amiga, you will need the Amiga's Kickstart ROMs. Now, this is a disclaimer that I have to do in any video like this, because you can buy the Amiga Kickstart ROMs legally still. They are under copyright, and the cheapest way to get them is to buy the Amiga Forever Essentials Pack. And I can get that off Google Play Store for at $1.99. And you get all the classic versions in here as well. And as this is an update of Amiga OS, you will need the operating system itself as well. Now, I've actually spoken to the developer, Jan, who told me he's tried lots of times to actually reach a deal where he can bundle the operating system and ROMs with AmiKit to make it a lot easier for the end user. But so far, he hasn't been able to reach an agreement, but he's made it as easy as possible to get up and running. And if you've got a copy of Amiga Forever, the emulation suite, then that really is the easiest way to do it, as it will automatically find all the files on there. And I've got an old version here from 2006 on CD. So if I put that in this machine, click on search, and it will find the ROMs and everything automatically. And it also detects the operating system files on the CD as well and copies everything over itself. And the installer took around 10 to 15 minutes to copy everything and it downloads some graphic drivers from the internet as well. And the whole thing is really seamless. You just sit back 
and let it do its own thing. Go and get a coffee, come back 50 minutes later, and it should be done. And then it will ask you to set your screen resolution, and I'll go for the maximum that my monitor supports. We'll do it in 1080p. And after the install, we land on the AmiKit desktop for the first time, and first impressions are, wow. And obviously the main thing to keep in mind is that all of this is running on an operating system from 1992 and the enhancements they've made to it are instantly apparent upon first launch. Now the first thing it will ask you to do is to register for updates. So I've put my uh, customer ID and my subscription details in there which uh, I won't show in the video for obvious reasons. But after you've done that you can just uh, click on check here and it will go through and check where all of these packages are the current version and all the components that it uses too. And if there is anything new it will offer them for download. Uh, click download now and it will automatically install them. Um, as it happens with this been a new install you know everything's kind of up to date already so uh, we don't have to do anything there. But I think it's very good that they've actually set the Amiga emulation up to be connected to the internet automatically. So we're connected to the online world via the Windows connection. So that means we haven't got, you know, hassle of configuring TCP IP stacks, which can be a bit of a headache to do on the Amiga sometimes. So it looks like everything's up to date. We can close that window and now we can explore AmiKit X. And the first thing I've got to say is, you know, how modern and slick this does look. Obviously, a big part of that is having a nice looking desktop wallpaper here, you know, nice high color, high resolution one. And a very nice looking icon set too and you know we can see that everything is uniform you know it's got a really nice visual appearance to it and we can see that all our discs are mounted on the uh, top left of the screen here we have a ram disc which you know is part of the amiga's operating system by default um you can think of this as like temporary storage you know to download installers that kind of thing and when you reboot the machine everything is deleted from here we also have the ami kit which is the system disk with uh, all of the amiga's stock system files are in here and if you click through the folders, it's just the older stuff that you would expect to find it's installed on you know amiga workbench and uh, and lots more as well there we go the old school clock I have to load that up to have a look. And uh, lots of additional games, applications, and demos are included here as well. So we'll have a closer look at some of those in just a minute. We also get a downloads directory on the desktop here, which is uh, quite handy if you're downloading stuff from the internet and you want to keep it all in one place. We've got some favorites here that give you uh, shortcuts to some things they suggest you might want to try out. You know, Another World, classic game, a few other public domain games and demos are included in here as well, a couple of mod files as well. So that'll be a good little introduction to jump into. And I also think it's quite handy that they've mounted the PC drives automatically on here as well. So if I click that, you can see that I can access my C drive from the Amiga emulation and uh, my USB stick as well. And even the, um, the CD-ROM drive is automatically mounted. So I've got that Amiga Forever CD in the drive and uh, that's appeared on the Amiga desktop. So obviously that's going to be really handy if you've got some old school, you know, Amiga CDs that you want to browse and use in emulation. Um, they've also got Dropbox set up here as well. You know, you can log in to your cloud storage. And uh, if we go in here, there are a few more options as well. There's also a Google Drive mounter and uh, Aminet to uh, download files from the Amiga software repository. So it's very cool. They've set all that up as well. And there is something here called Rabbit Hole. Now, this is an interesting idea, uh, as obviously a lot of the Amiga's programs, particularly for uh, doing things on the Internet and playing video, for example, are quite outdated. So the idea here is that what they'll do is let you run your native operating systems programs on the Amiga screen. So for example, if I was to click the Firefox icon here, give that a double click, and it will launch Firefox in Windows. Now, that's a cool idea, but as you can see now, because it's a Windows application, the, uh, <laughs> the taskbar on the start menu has appeared at the bottom of the screen, kind of spoiling the illusion a little bit. I mean, we can work around this a little bit, maybe by uh, auto hiding the taskbar, so then, you know, it doesn't appear. So that, that's one way around it as well, but also it looks like a Windows program because of the, uh, you know, the, the gadgets around the side here and the, uh, the window theme. So one thing I was thinking that we could do is uh, use something like, um, for example, if I click in here, I've actually got Windows Blinds, which is a skinning engine for Windows. So I thought maybe I can find a nice Amiga OS theme that we can skin Windows. So then, you know, when I'm launching Windows applications, they actually look a bit more like Amiga apps. And I found one here, uh, Amiga OS 3.9. The only thing is, unfortunately, at the time I'm recording this video, and I'll give this a try again now, <laughs> I want to do a 30-day trial. Uh, I'll put my email address in there, that's fine but it tells me their activation server is offline. And uh, unfortunately, 
yeah, there is no way to use Windows blinds without activating it. So uh, I can't try that out. But that might be something that, you know, you might want to look into if you want this to be a bit more of a seamless experience. Really, all it is is a launcher to tell your host OS to load an application up. And obviously, you know, it's going to work like uh, anything that you'd search for. And Amikit actually uses a famous workbench replacement system called Directory Opus. And uh, this is actually still in development today. I use the modern version of Directory Opus on Windows 11, and it offers many features and enhancements over the standard Amiga workbench. You know, stuff like um, file operations are a lot slicker, um, and really just makes the whole experience of using the Amiga, you know, the fact that you get these, uh, you know, nice little... Uh, but menu bars and you can, you know, copy and paste things and have listers and everything. It really just makes file manipulation a lot better than using the standard Amiga Workbench. And the version they've included here is the final commercial version, 5.8 Magellan version 2. Uh, they spent a lot of time setting it up as well. So, you know, it, it doesn't mean that anything you've got in here, uh, generally you can double click archives and that kind of thing and images are all going to be configured to uh, display and uh, on archive properly. So it really is the ultimate directory opus configuration. And they've got Magic Menu installed by default, which gives you these nice transparent menus. Um, this is actually one of the first things I generally install on any Amiga configuration, and it means you can open menus from anywhere. And this gives them, you know, a much more modern appearance over the stock Amiga menus. So nice to see that included out of the box as well. And we have a start menu and a dock down the bottom of the screen too. And a lot of programs that you might want to frequently use are all here in different categories. So um, I'll go through those in a bit more detail in just a moment. And also we have something called uh, Morpheus. So if I click this here, um, this is actually to allow you to change the configuration of AmiKit, including the visual theme. Now it comes as standard with this um, nice looking dark mode. You know, dark modes are very in vogue right now, but you can change it to a few other included themes as well. So if I click on here, visuals, and we go to... Uh, full presets. You can see there are a few already installed. So we'll try this one here, the uh, modern retro preset. And this one is kind of like a modern version of the old uh, Workbench 1.3 look. So uh, yeah, that's very cool. I do like having those, uh, you know, old school Amiga colors and even the uh, the window decoration is very reminiscent of the, the earliest Amiga operating systems. And there is a light mode as well, the Amikit X preset. And I I think I actually prefer this over the dark mode. Don't get me wrong, I think dark modes definitely have the place, but it seems like they're in everything these days. So it's nice to have, you know, a bit of light for a change, I think. And using Morpheus, we can also change quite a few things about the configuration of Amica X as well, including uh, which program we use for desktop replacement. So we've got Directory Opus uh, 582 at the moment. We could use Escalos, which is another one, or even use the uh, standard Amiga Workbench. But as I say, uh, Dopus is strongly recommended. So uh, I think we'll stick with that. And there are lots of programs included. Now, I won't go through every single one as that would take too long, but I'll pick out a few um, interesting ones that I found on here, including uh, this program here called Ask Your Amiga. Now, I hadn't seen this before, and I thought, well, that's quite interesting. So I'll ask it, you know, how are you? And it says, I'm doing well, thank you. And I thought, okay, what's this then? So if we go back and search for something else, so we'll search for um, Amiga 500. You see here, we get some information about the machine. Um, and then we can look down here, we can look at an image of it. And it will show me an Amiga 500 there. This is actually a Wikipedia search tool, but actually more than just that, it uses the API of Wolfram Alpha. So you can ask for text, graphics, or math and science questions as well. So it is very cool to have this included. And I wasn't familiar with this program, so I think I'll be installing this on my uh, Amiga 4000 as well. And for those who prefer the classic directory Opus 4 file list, uh, they've included Opus 4 in here as well. Not everyone gets on with Magellan, I understand that. So it's nice to have that included here. And actually, it's a really nice directory Opus configuration with everything again, just set up to go. You know, all the buttons and everything here are uh, configured to launch file players and everything. So uh, yeah, really nice Opus 4 config. And there are loads of audio applications pre-installed too, um, including Amiga Amp, which is uh, an Amiga OS clone of Winamp. So you can stream internet radio and uh, play your favorite MP3s from here. And also, you know, if you're running an Amiga, you probably want to check out a few mods. There are loads of uh, mod players included too, including my favorite one, Hippo Player. I've used this since the 90s. And if I uh, click on there, I should be able to... Uh, Add in a mod, and as you can see, they've actually put quite a few in here that you might recognize from uh, Amiga games. Yeah, always got to be a bit of Lotus 2. 
Love that Barry Leach soundtrack. So, uh, yeah, you can uh, just have this running on your workbench here and uh, just keep the mods playing all day while you get on with stuff. And there are heaps of internet applications bundled with Amikit X as well, including three different web browsers. Now, the most current one is iBrowse. So if I launch this, it's actually from 2020, iBrowse version 2.5. Um, you get a 30-minute time demo in here, where, which, you know, everything is fully usable for 30 minutes, but it will quit after that unless you register it. But as you can see, they've actually put quite a few um, shortcuts in here as well. If I click on Amiga World, um, that will take me to the uh, Amiga World forum. As you can see, you know, all launches uh, nice and quickly here. Um, Amigans, which I think is another forum. Yeah, Amiga Forever, that'll take me there. Now, one thing you'll notice about um, Eyebrows is even though it is uh, compliant with modern security standards for the most part, I mean, we've got um, AMI SSL installed on here, so I can use, you know, if I was to go to uh, the Amiga Wikipedia page, for example, via Google, um, we can click on there and it's got no problem using SSL. You know, this is an SSL encrypted page. As you can see down the bottom there, 256 bit encryption. You'll notice the layout looks a bit weird on some sites. That's because iBrowse doesn't have CSS compatibility. So, uh, yeah, the layouts of uh, some pages will look a bit odd, even though, you know, you can actually browse most of them just fine. And iBrowse is more than enough for downloading programs or, you know, surfing forums works really well in here. But it's not quite a, a modern web browser. You're not going to be watching YouTube or uh, probably going on Facebook on there, <laughs> even though the mobile version might work, I believe. Uh, but for a more modern featured web browser, we can go to NetSurf. Now, this is actually quite a heavy browser by Amiga standards. And um, really, most classic Amigas are too slow to run this comfortably. And I did find in here, if we click on um, Amiga.org, for example, you can see my mouse cursor is frozen there. Uh, it's telling me the SSL certificate is too old. I can just proceed with that. Um, and again, as you can see, you know, the system is struggling with this, even on a machine of this power compared to a classic Amiga. It does kind of feel like NetSurf is still just a bit too heavy to run in this environment. So uh, yeah, you can see when it launches, you know, if I click on a thread here again, we're going to get the mouse cursor chugging away. So it is usable. And one thing is it does have CSS. So it does mean that, you know, modern websites are going to display properly in here. But really, I think a combination of uh, eyebrows and probably Firefox via a rabbit hole probably has most needs covered, I think, that way. And as someone who spent the majority of my teenage years on IRC, it is quite nice that they've included a couple of IRC clients, including my favorite one, uh, A Merck or Am IRC, never knew how to pronounce this program. I've always called it AMERC, um, which is actually configured with a load of servers in here as well, um, most of the Amiga specific ones. And we even have a Twitter client as well, Twitter Amiga, which does work, kinda. As you can see here, I'm logged in as myself, uh, Danwood underscore UK, if you want to follow me on Twitter, by the way. And you can see that I've got my uh, my timeline here. You know, we can read a few uh, tweets that people have posted here. Uh, and also, I can see my mentions here too. Uh, people that have tagged me on Twitter. Uh, the only thing is I can't, it doesn't seem like I can reply to anyone and actually trying to compose a tweet um, returns a bad request error. So uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of, you know, consuming Twitter, you can see tweets and stuff on here, but um, not quite fully featured if you can't reply to people. But it is cool to see something like this on an Amiga anyway, I think. And there is a small but decent bunch of games included with Amikit X, including a few former commercial games that are now free and some shareware ones as well. So obviously it's not like a massive pack of Amiga games, but there are some nice demos in here to uh, kind of get you started with the Amiga gaming scene. And they include iGame as well. So adding your own games to it is as simple as downloading the WHD load files and dropping them into the games folder, do a rescan and they'll appear in this list. And of course, being an Amiga emulator, there are some nice classic scene demos included too. So that's a quick overview of the Windows version of Amikit X, and it does give you what it promises, a modern looking, a modern feeling version of the Amiga's workbench with a lot of the work and hard setup and graft done for you, really. Obviously, this is running on top of Windows, which I must admit, when I do see Windows popping up, it does take me out of the experience a little bit, but the version for the Raspberry Pi could solve that as actually it boots directly into the Amikit experience. So we'll have a look at that next. 
Now, just before we jump into that part of the video, I wanted to take a quick second to give a huge thank you to my sponsor, the brilliant Skillshare. Now, they are a massive online learning community where millions of people all come together to take the next step in their own creative journey. And you can join in as well and take part in thousands of classes on so many different topics, including marketing, design, photography, video production, life improvement, and lots more, all in easy to digest parts. And you might know that I host a weekly retro gaming podcast, and I've really enjoyed John Lagomarsino's classes. He's actually the head of production at Anchor, and since I moved into a home studio due to COVID, there's some great tips on here. Everything from episode planning, choosing the right equipment, microphones, mixers, lots more as well. So if you ever wanted to start your own podcast, it's definitely worth checking out. And Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, a great way to learn with your extra time, and a lot cheaper than pricey in-person workshops. And of course, I've got you a great deal, so you can jump in and get started today. The first 1,000 people to use the link in this video's description will get a one-month completely free trial of Skillshare. So claim it quick and help out the channel, and a big thank you to our friends at Skillshare for their support. Okay then, let's test out Amikit X on the Raspberry Pi 400. Now, I've done videos on this machine before. I'm a big fan of the design of this machine. It's got that kind of retro-inspired, all-in-one compact design. Kind of feels a bit like a modern-day Amiga 600 or something. So I'm looking forward to experiencing a high-end Amiga environment on here. Now, the first thing we're going to need is a blank SD card or a format one using the official SD card formatter. I tend to always use this tool as it makes sure that you're getting the full capacity of the SD card and everything else that you've used previously on there is definitely erased. And then I'm going to write the Amica X image to the SD card using the official Raspberry Pi imager. So we just select the image and the target device, wait a few minutes, and then we've got an SD card that we can boot on the Raspberry Pi 400. And up on initial boot, I must admit, at first glance, I thought this had booted directly into the Amica X environment, which I was quite surprised by. But upon closer inspection, it turns out this is actually a lightweight Linux distro that is skinned to look like Amica X. Of course, we need to do the setup and uh, find the ROM and the operating system files and all that. And there are actually a few more steps to doing this on the Raspberry Pi. But usefully, in this folder here, Start Here Required Files, they've actually gone to the effort of making an install video that kind of talks you through all the steps that you need to do to get it installed. So um, that's really useful and, you know, a lot nicer than having to trawl through a website or a, a PDF for instructions. So the first thing we need to do is to configure the SD card and make a partition for the Amica X installer. So we'll double click on that Gparted desktop and uh, the password is just Amica. And you will see that there is quite a lot of unallocated space on your SD card. We've got 110 gigabytes spare here. So what we'll do is we'll just drag the um, initial partition here to use the um, blank space on the SD card. So we can just drag that all the way up to make sure everything is going to be used properly there. And we'll grow into that space. Click on that. Apply. And about 30 seconds later, the SD card is now ready, so we can close that. Um, next thing we want to do is make sure that we are connected to our Wi-Fi. So um, I've connected to my network Paris, uh, just in here. You can um, put your SSID in there and um, your Wi-Fi password. Just make sure the machine's actually online to uh, download updates. And the next thing we are going to need is, of course, the operating system and Amiga Kickstart ROMs. Now, again, it recommends that you use Amiga forever. One problem I've got is um, there is no CD-ROM drive on the Raspberry Pi. And actually, the latest versions of Amiga forever that are delivered digitally are as Windows installer files. And I wondered, well, how do you get an ISO image from that? It turns out that you can actually make a bundle from your Amiga Forever install on Windows to make an ISO file, something I wasn't aware of before. And this is actually really useful. So I set this off. Um, you can choose what goes into this file, uh, but it will be pretty big. So it will configure um, all of your configuration and shared files and everything into a single ISO file that then you can drop onto a USB stick, put that into your Raspberry Pi, and then you just need to copy it from the USB stick into that folder, start here, required files. So I'll copy that over. And now if we launch Amiga Kit, we should be able to just boot from the CD image, which I can find by uh, clicking on here. And there we go. We've got the Amiga Forever DVD ISO. 
And then if I start it, it should run through the installer. Now, you will get an error saying that it can't find the ROM. Um, obviously, we haven't installed the Kickstart ROMs yet, so this is nothing to be concerned about. It actually just uses the open source AROS Kickstart ROM to uh, get the emulation started. So we'll click on OK. But after that, it should be the same as when um, I run it on Windows. It should automatically find all the files from the Amiga Forever ISO file. And there you go, it's been detected. And the ROM's been found. And it should find the operating system files. And there you go. Again, it's just going to copy everything over. And uh, we'll leave it a couple of minutes. And we should then land on the um, Amica X workbench and uh, be able to use it from there. And that installer was really quick. Actually, it took around five minutes under Windows, but on here, um, that was over in about 30 seconds. So now we pick the screen mode again. I'm going to go um, 1920 by 1080. We'll click on OK. And it looks like that's it. Very painless. So press Enter, and we should land in the Amica environment. And there we go. Webbench screen into directory opus, and uh, we are in the Amica environment again. Yeah, again, we'll download the additional software. So I'm really impressed at how seamless this whole process is. You know, they really do take all the effort out of configuring an Amiga high end emulation platform like this. And that's it. We're installed, up and running. Um, four megabytes of chip RAM, 225 megs of fast RAM here as well. Lots of memory for an Amiga environment, and uh, we should have all the same things installed as we had on Windows. It will be quite interesting to see how the uh, rabbit hole environment runs on Linux. So um, I wonder if they've installed any of these already. So let's try browser. OK, so again, we get the... Um, the Linux start menu and everything down the bottom. So it looks pretty similar to Windows and so far as it just runs in front of the um, Amikit screen. So, uh, yeah, we just go into whatever, anything in Google here. Yeah, I agree. OK, yes, yeah, so, I mean, again, you know, the, the experience seems pretty similar. I know there are uh, theming packs available for Linux, so you could probably make this look a bit more like uh, an Amiga environment if you wanted to. So, um, yeah, but everything else just seems pretty much the same as it was on Windows. So we'll try running um, a demo here. Let's try State of the Art, one of my favorite Amiga demos. And it runs full screen. Um, yeah, it looks nice and smooth on here. Hopefully my capture card is getting all this. So yeah, extremely impressed. Now, the next thing we need to do, and the final thing in this video, is just to try and get the um, Raspberry Pi to boot directly into Amica X so we haven't got to launch it up from Linux every time. So uh, how do we do that then? Let's try just coming out of this. Is that going to take me back to uh, Linux? I should down. We'll try that. And that actually rebooted the entire Raspberry Pi. So we're back on the Linux desktop here. And I think the only thing we have to do is to toggle this little boot mode selector here. So if I double click that, you'll see there now it says boot mode on and uh, give the Pi a reboot again with this. And fingers crossed, it should boot straight into the Amiga emulation environment now. And we did get a brief glimpse of Linux there. You know, the start menu in the bottom uh, taskbar popped up and we see the uh, Wi-Fi notification there. But apart from that, you know, that was a pretty seamless boot uh, straight into Amica X in around 20 seconds. So, uh, yeah, extremely impressed. So I think I found my uh, new portable high-end Amiga. You know, this appears to run really well on here. So uh, that's been a look at Amica XE on the uh, Raspberry Pi and Windows. Um, a really slick, well-configured high-end Amiga configuration. Admittedly, not for everyone. I mean, if you're just someone who wants to play classic Amiga games, this is probably not for you. But if you were someone who maybe had a, a high-end Amiga 4000, highly configured directory opus configuration, a workbench back in the day, this is something I think you'll feel very at home with. And uh, I love the fact that pretty much all the hard work is done for you as well. So uh, top work on this. If you do want to give it a download, I'll link up everything we've talked about in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. And a quick reminder that if you enjoy my videos here on YouTube, I also do a weekly retro gaming and technology podcast. New episodes released every Friday. You can search your favorite podcast app for The Retro Hour, ask your smart speaker, or head to our website at theretrohour.com. And while you're here on my YouTube channel, here are another couple of my videos I think you might enjoy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.